showmethecardi.com. I'm Anuja. And I'm Hithal. And look what we found. Beautiful and fresh looking mustard leaves. Yes. So, so nice. Also known as sarso, or sarso ka sag. That's what we're going to be making today. It's a very, very typical Punjabi uh, meal. So, sarso ka sag, makki ki roti, maki dal, and um, and this little shakkar thing that they make on the side. I don't have. I don't think there's a name for it. I don't think there is. Awesome. <laughs> and a big blob of butter. So let's start with the sarso kasag first. And you know, if you've ever worked with mustard, it, these are like huge, beautiful leaves, but it does have a really tough end to it. So it's really easy to get rid of it. You just tear off the leaves all the way up to the top and just snap it off. Now you don't want to use this because it's really fibrous and you know, while you're chewing, you're going to get strands and yeah. it's not a good feeling. So, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of wastage, we understand, but it really needs to go. <laughs> so if it's not uh, in season or it's hard to find, uh, here's an alternative. Uh, there you get mustard leaves even in, a, even in the frozen section, but it again does tend to have a little bit of the stalk, so you, you might have to kind of pick a little bit, or your other option is to grind it fully. So here's another option, but since we found mm -hmm. this, this is what we're going to use. So while Hethel is doing that, we've also got spinach leaves, fresh spinach leaves. Again, you can use frozen ones if you like. And we're going to just, uh, we wash them off really well and we're just going to cut off the stalks and just use the leaves. So I'll get busy with that. Over here we have a big pot and it's got two cups of water in it and we're going to start heating it up. So we've de-stocked all of our mustard leaves and I'm just giving them a rough chop. Uh, the big leaves are a little hard to fit into our pot, so if we just chop it down a little bit, it'll be fine and we're going to be grinding this later anyway. Right. And the water is boiling, so we're going to go ahead and add the leaves in there. And our spinach leaves are already pretty small, so we don't have to chop those. We're going to go ahead and add those in too. Okay, this may seem like a lot, but it's just enough for the two of us. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a, it seems like a lot. The thing is that the spinach and the mustard leaves are going to shrink and they're just really going to reduce quite a bit. So a good rule of thumb for this particular dish is a third of spinach to one of the mustard greens. So we're going to cook it. We're going to cook it open and we're going to allow the, the mustard and the spinach to was wilt a lot and get cooked. So it's been about four minutes and look at this. It's wilted so beautifully and the water is just perfect. And now we're just going to allow it to cook. So our mustard and spinach cooked for about 15 minutes and they're nice and tender now. So we're going to just drain it out. Uh, we have a little colander here and another bowl. We're going to drain it out here and then we're going to keep it to the side and let it cool before we grind it. Yeah, and we're going to save the water just so that in case later on your sag is too dry and you like it a little more liquidy then you know you can use this water as opposed to using regular water. So for our masala, we had uh, two medium-sized onions and we've chopped down one and a half of them and we've kept half for the garnishing later on. We also have two tomatoes which we've chopped and we're reserving one for the garnishing later on. And we have a tablespoon each of ginger and garlic and we're going to put all of that into our pan. We have one tablespoon of oil heating up in there. We're just going to cook it down. Right, and it's hot. We're going to add in the onions. And as always, we're going to add a little bit of salt just to get it going faster. It's been about three minutes. We're going to add in one tablespoon each of minced ginger and minced garlic. And we'll cook this until the onions get slightly brown. Onions look done. We're going to go ahead and add in the two tomatoes, chopped. And we're going to cook it until the tomatoes get softened and cooked down. So while our tomatoes are cooking, our spinach is cooled down and I'm going to transfer the leaves into a food processor and we're going to pulse it and just grind the spinach down, but we're not going to blend it down. So we still want a little bit of texture. But then the choice is always yours. If you like it ground into like a fine paste, then that's okay too. Alright, the tomatoes have cooked down and 
and they look really good. Of course, we have not used a whole lot of oil, but if you kind of press it down, you can see you know, a little bit of oil is oozing out from the sides. So we are ready for the spinach and the mustard greens. And mix. And at this point we can add in some salt. Red chili powder. And about one teaspoon of garam masala. And mix. Now you're going to mix it well and allow it to cook. Now there is I have to say something over here, <laughs> disclaimer, is I am a Punjabi and I actually call a few people, quite a few people to find out the recipe. Every Punjabi person I know makes this dish differently. So again, it's like sambar or like a dal, every little region or every little family has a different recipe. So find one that works for you and this one worked for us. <laughs> so this is what we are showing you. And we can also start working on our garnishing. We reserved half an onion before. So we're going to chop our onion into nice big chunks. And we're going to lightly fry it and add it on top. This looks so good. And we also have our one tomato. Same thing, big chunks. And you can also check over here and make sure you know the spices and the salt and everything is okay. And if you want uh, to make it a little more liquidy, and if you want to blend it even more and make it a little more, you know, you want it to be a little more pasty, uh, you, you have that water, you can always add it in. But if your water is very bitter and your mustard greens are very bitter, avoid that and just use regular water. This is done, we're going to put it to the side and start working on the seasoning. So we've transferred our sersoka sag into a serving dish mm -hmm. and we have a tablespoon of oil heating in our pan. We're going to add our half of a chopped onion. I'm going to give it a head start and just allow it to cook a little bit. Alright, looks a little brown, translucent, perfect. Let's add the tomatoes. I kept them all big so that they don't get lost in the dish and it looks prettier. So should I say the most corniest thing now? <laughs> Be my guest. <laughs> I miss home. <laughs> well, you shouldn't miss home. Not with this in front of us. <laughs> I know. How rustic does it look? It looks so beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. We turn off the stove. And we're going to put some on top and garnish. Perfect. It looks very good. Mm -hmm. So what follows for Soka Saag? Makki ki roti. <laughs> you guessed it. But before we do that, you know, you have to add something onto that. Actually, it's better if you put it in the plate. You put some of this and just put a big blob of butter. It does wonders. <laughs> Actually, that's one of the reasons why we try to keep a little less oil in here. So we can, we don't have to skimp on the butter on the saag because that's a must. You have to have that. Absolutely. So we'll do that and... We'll see you in the, in the next video, right? right? Yeah. Following this one? Yeah. Maki roti right. on the way. <laughs> okay. So let's give this a little try. Because mm -hmm. it's just looking too good. Mm -hmm. Can't wait for the rotis. <laughs> mm. I love it. The texture is so good. You have to try it like this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And enjoy your sag and join us again on another episode of ShowMeTheCurry.com. Adding a pinch of spice to your life.